Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Raconteur. I hope you're doing well, having a good weekend. Uh, today I finished reading A Visit from the Footbinder by Emily Prager. It's a selection of five stories. Some are very short, like 10, 20 pages. Two of them are 40 pages, one of them is 80 pages. So they vary in length. Uh, published in 1982, and a very weird set of stories. And I don't say weird fiction as in cosmic horror, uh, you know, those H.P. Lovecraft, Clark Ashton Smith type stories. I mean weird as in unnerving, unsettling, startlingly original. Two of the stories in particular had really original like premises. Um, the cover from Vintage Contemporaries, these old 80s covers, I love the, the 80s uh, Vintage Contemporary series. Um, that The picture on there really captures just how strange and unnerving the stories really are. Um, the, uh, I don't want to go in and spoil them too much in case somebody does want to read this. I do recommend it. I'll identify two things I think Prager does well. Uh, but I'll also add a couple of reservations on people who may not want to read these. Um, it was published in 1982, so I couldn't find any PDFs to link to, like, of the stories themselves. But again, I, I do recommend it. So the title story visit from the Footbinder, it was set with a uh, six-year-old girl who, in, in the 13th century, on the day before she has her feet actually, like, uh, bound for the first time um, to shorten them. And uh, I, I after I finished reading, I went and read, like, couple of like Goodreads reviews, Amazon reviews, things like that. And I saw a lot of people commenting on the title story. That wasn't the story that really like knocked me uh, aside the way that the other story, two of the other stories did. So one of them is called the Alumni Bulletin and is very bizarre. The way I would describe these two stories is Aristophanes on acid. I've never tried acid, um, but from if, if, if what I've read or heard about it is true, being on acid and watching or reading an Aristophanes play might sort of give you an idea of what on earth is happening in, in, and how strange uh, and, and sexual those two stories are. So the Alumni Bulletin is one of them. And you have a group of um, late 20s, early 30s uh, uh, friends, all female, who since high school have gathered together periodically and they essentially go through a a sort of like rite of passage ceremony together and it's really bizarre it involves like their love life and how that's been going uh it involves like they take drugs they which if that's not something you're interested in don't read the stories <laughs> uh but they also and this is the part where it'll be like you know <laughs> uh for mature audiences um they also have a set of wooden palaces that they take out they don't do anything inappropriate with them they just like basically have them and, and then like put them on as part of the ceremony and that of course goes back to what happened during Greek comedy with Aristophanes where the stage actors would be running around with these oversized phalluses that they would like run into each other with and that was part of the physical comedy of early Greek comedy um it's very body and so <laughs> <laughs> there's this aspect and it's that story is really like the premise is so interesting and then there's this weird introduction of Jersey Kaczynski and like going on about some of his books I didn't feel it worked perfectly but it was an interesting story the third story is uh, the agoraphobe it is a, that really is a horror story with a character who uh, suffers from agoraphobia does not want to like go and interact hasn't really interacted with anybody in a couple of months and now is going to jump into a cab and go across New York City uh, to a party and is is overwhelmed by that. And the twist is that she has an imaginary friend who basically acts as both the devil and the angel, like trying to push her to do things outside of her comfort zone, but also taunting her in a really like uh, strange way. Uh, which brings me then, uh, the fifth story is very short and it, I honestly feel like Prager wrote it in part to show that she could write the quintessential like yuppies having witty conversation like New York story that like Jay, Jay McInerney is famous for, those types of writers. Um, I really feel that's what the last story was. The fourth story, the longest one, is again Aristophanes on acid and it's called, it has a, a whole, The Lincoln Pruitt Anti-Rape Device Memoirs of the Women's Combat Army in Vietnam. And all of all of the stories have female protagonists. That the Lincoln Pruitt story has not only female protagonists. We get a variety of uh, female characters, and it deals very seriously with like the the horror and fear of of physical rape, of of what like how women have to be afraid of that. And and Prager really 
does a nice job of presenting presenting the the like the psychological horror without there there ever having been anything that's occurred. Um, so she does that well. It is you know like again if that's a subject matter you don't want to read about don't uh, please don't. Um, it is set during the Vietnam War in 1968, and so some of the characters employ like really racist terms for Vietnamese people. We do have a pair of uh, at least two Vietnamese characters, um, like Viet Cong characters, who were in the minds of as well in that story. So you really get a, a, a fully fledged, like it's a longer story, and it really, um, it's again, just very, very strange. The idea is that the women are going to go in um, pretending to be Buddhist nuns, they have their heads shaved, they're wearing saffron robes, they're gonna be dropped off and basically abandoned. The, the military is not gonna support them at all. And they have this special device that's been created that will essentially allow them, again, for mature audiences, uh, essentially will allow them to castrate um, the opposing soldiers, and that's gonna turn the tide. And so we, we have this long story in which that's, that's the plot. And it's, again, really strange. So, uh, kind of tried to give some very broad, quick strokes on, on what these very weird stories are about. Um, to give an example of, of how uh, Prager writes from uh, one of those, from that longer story set in Vietnam, only once before had Dana felt so patriotic, and that was when she had left the grim Welsh mining town of her birth to come to America for good. It was 15 years since that other moment in time when, encased in the furry roar of a flying machine, she had awoken to a purple caked sunrise over the grid pattern of New York City. She had to her name a 50 pound note and a newfound friend in the person of a GM salesman who occupied the seat next to her. And of course that feeling, that glory surge in the pit of her stomach that she felt again now. And so you kind of see like, not only does Prager have weird ideas, but we get these strange um, furry roar of a flying machine uh, awoken to a purple caked sunrise. <laughs> Those are just, those aren't images I'd naturally think of. So I, I thought it was interesting. We also get some uh, sort of like yuppie-ish dialogue. She can do that well, Prager. Um, and yet and yet once Faye once when I was staying with him in London, he left early one morning on a pretext. I went for a walk and saw him on the King's Road with another woman. When he phoned that afternoon, I told him I had seen him and that I thought he was a lying little cheat. We hung up and I ran a bath and got into the bathtub. 25 minutes later, the bathroom door opened and there he was. He gave me a kiss, apologized, and left. Yes, he left the office, drove all the way home to give me a kiss, which he gave me, and then drove all the way back. Total time door to door, one hour for one kiss. I was impressed, Faye, especially since he belonged to the other woman and I was the interloper. I shall never forget it. <laughs> so you get some, some interesting little store, uh, dialogue components as well with, with Prager. Um, in terms of other works that it made me think of, obviously Jersey Kaczynski's Steps. This wasn't the book by Kaczynski they mentioned, but again, you see Chris Great, uh, Vintage Contemporaries cover. And this was a National Book Award winner in the 70s. I believe it was the 70s. Um, Jay McInerney's Bright Lights, Big City, again, uh, just an absolutely legendary cover. Uh, in terms of Aristophanes, highly recommend Lysistrata. I'm probably going to read that this week now. Uh, this weird sense of strange satire. The Satyricon by Petronius. Um, in terms of like a, a really interesting nonfiction book um, dealing with uh, uh, the Vietnam War, Dispatches by Michael Hare, which is a, uh, a whole set of essentially like journalism that he then um, recompiled uh, while he was over there. And then <laughs> the uh, Modest Proposal by Jonathan Swift. I, there are some aspects of that that I think might have influenced Prager, who worked, um, before she wrote this, she had written for uh, the National Lampoon and then later Saturday Night Live. So I don't know if anybody ever, else has ever read any of her work. I thought it was really weird. And again, it's going to stick with me. Bye.